Over the years, hundreds of thousands of Burmese refugees and illegal workers have crossed this river into Thailand. <laughs> When there's trouble in Burma, people here in the border town of Mesot are among the first to hear about it. Last week, three monks escaped the Burmese army's crackdown and walked over the border to Mesot. These monks don't want to reveal their identities because they took part in the protests in Rangoon and fear reprisals. They say the soldiers will go to hell for their violence towards Buddhist monks. It's the day after the monks made it across the border, and these Burmese exiles are gathering at a monastery. They've come to express their concern at the Burmese army's crackdown. The vast majority of Burmese are Buddhists, but there are Christians and Muslims here today too. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we pray for a country our country, Burma, a country in crisis. We gathered here in this place to pray for peace to come about. Many monks and people have been abused and killed in recent days. Amen and amen. They needed official permission because this is a sensitive issue here. Thailand makes a lot of money doing business with the generals in Burma. Uh, we are not demonstrating here. Just we are gathering here to pray for Burmese people. Mm -hmm. So it's not a demonstration. Yeah. Yes, uh, we are doing with the permit of the method, method uh, governor. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we are permitted already. A group of youths begin singing a protest song. But while prayer is tolerated here, Politics is not. A senior Burmese monk from the monastery comes out to lead the prayers. The local police chief in plain clothes wants it over with quickly. But monk Kama Kultala will not be silenced. Kama Kultala has lived in exile here for 30 years. He's horrified by the way the Burmese army has treated the monks. Burma's monks have provided the spiritual backbone for the recent protests. Like Buddhist monks throughout Southeast Asia, Kultala wakes well before dawn to chant and pray. Then he sets out to collect alms. 
People who give food get his blessings in return. Buddhism is absolutely central to life in Burma and here in Thailand, and monks are revered. Before the military crackdown, monks had upturned their arms bowls and refused to accept the soldiers' offerings. This rejection of spiritual services was a powerful gesture of defiance. Since then, monks have become the main victims of the army's crackdown. The monks say the protests began with four demands. An apology for the earlier mistreatment of monks, lowering of fuel prices, release of political prisoners, and a dialogue for national reconciliation. They were there on the 26th and 27th of September when the crackdown began. ไอ้ตายไปตรงนี้ยืนนอนหลายเดไล่ได้เฉยจ้าเราไอ้ตามวยอะละกาตรงสีจ้าเราอะละกาตรงสีจ้าเราไอ้มาตั้งแต่เน
He says that although more ordinary people were killed during the 1988 uprising, for the monks, this time the crackdown is more severe. 300 monks were arrested at the time. Mm. But this time, thousands were already arrested. Okay. And some were disappeared. Mm. And you've confirmed that? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and uh, do you have any idea what's happened to the ones that have disappeared? Yes, I have no idea. I'm, it's unspeakable. Uh, I'm so worried about them. It's difficult to uh, get a true information. But uh, uh, maybe they were detained in some centers, or maybe they, they, they were totally uh, disappeared. Mm -hmm. And is, is torture common even for them? Yes, it's, uh, torture is uh, common. For everyone? Yeah, yeah. For everyone. Mm -hmm. Kun Seng says the monks have been building up to these demonstrations since democratic elections were overturned in 1990. This time uh, they, they knew this is the right time and this, uh, they need uh, to lead the people in peaceful way. So it was a coordinated thing? Yes, yes. And building yes. over many years? Yes, yes. They have already established this organisation. Uh, this is not the uh, ending, this is just the study. The 26th of October marks the end of the Buddhist Lent, and many predict this is when another round of demonstrations may begin. From their safe house in Mesot, these monks say they will continue to push for change and they're not willing to wait another 20 years. With a ruthless crackdown still underway, it's hard to see how they'll be able to coordinate more protests. But Kamar Kultala is hopeful that the generals will not be around forever. David O'Shea, and according to 